Boy, it is Tuesday. It is Monday's hangover. I think I have a little hangover, Brandon. Uh, you know, just hanging out in Nashville. That's the way it goes. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but people drink alcohol here. It's, it's <laughs> not. It's not like a lot of other places. People where, people uh, tend to mix mix alcohol and, and music on occasion. They they do, and there was a lot of that last night. And I and I'm guessing for me. Uh, even though it's Tuesday, there's probably going to be a lot of that tonight as well. And I imagine it'll be tomorrow night and all of that. So, um, yeah, I, uh, we, we had a good time last night in Nashville. Nashville is, is virtually unrecognizable at this point. Uh, I love this city, but I, I don't recognize it anymore. It's, it's, it's outgrown itself. I mean, it's insane how many people seven days a week are in this town. It's just insane. And how many people have moved here. But anyway. I met them all last night. I met every single one of them. So, yeah, got that out of the way. Brandon, how's everything going there in Dallas? You guys got it under control there without me? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know we working out. We worked out our kinks yesterday, and today everything is smooth sailing. Yesterday, yesterday was a wild day, man. I just yeah. tell everybody. I um, so I was in here. We we had some technical difficulties, and then I had to go over to the studio uh, where we're recording the uh, working on the new album, and. Uh, then we we had some glitches there too, so we had to we had to as Joe Biden's administration would say, we put a lid on it at about one o'clock. <laughs> so <laughs> headed back today. We got some stuff accomplished though; it's good stuff. Nice. Uh, got new album art done uh, for the uh, the new Christmas song that's coming out in November. Um, I'm telling you, I'm going to be the new Mariah Carey. I will be the, when you go in the stores, you will be, you know, that all I want for Christmas is you. You're going to hear Chad Prather's <laughs> I'd be jolly too. And uh, trust me, you guys are going to love it. Um, I was reading this, Brandon, you sent this over and I was laughing. I, I did not want to talk about this. I had no idea that this was going to pop into my brain, but I'm just fascinated by some of these, some of these articles that you sent over. Um, first of all, you know, <laughs> this climate change nonsense. I, isn't it funny that everything in the world these days is blamed on climate change? I mean, you know, uh, we live on a planet that's however many years old. Uh, it has shaken off its inhabitants before it can shake us off again. But uh, you, as the uh, you and your carbon footprint, you are the enemy of all things good. Uh, that's what that's what the uh, the woke agenda, the progressive agenda, the World Economic Forum, the the World Health Organization, the New World Order, the cabal, the Ber Bilderbergers, the Illuminati. You pick your you pick your conspiracy group out there. Uh, your your massive of overlords they've all if there's one thing they agree on it's the climate science and i put science in quotation marks it has become their religion and uh it is getting ludicrous uh if you if, if you um if you look at the stuff they're doing here's the headline from blaze this was yesterday 41 percent of french support lifetime limit of four flights per person to combat climate change. That's a survey they did. Uh, they surveyed about 1,100 people. 41% of the French they surveyed. The French. I mean, I, I just have to laugh. Now, you got to remember, um, the French, it, they're easy to mock sometimes, okay? But <clears throat> they say you should only be able to have four flights. You get on an airplane, you go somewhere, you should be limit, limited to four flights in your entire life. <laughs> that's, how, that's how ludicrous uh, this whole idea is becoming. The, the fact that they ask that question to anybody, that that's a poll or a survey question, and 41% of them, now, now it gets funny, it gets funny here. So this was done by the Consumer Science and Analytics Institute. Um, startling number of individuals support strictly limiting airplane travel to combat climate change. Now, they were asked, um, uh, you know, would they be willing to uh, limit their flights to over, you know, just to just four flights over their entire lifetime? Uh, four flights is my entire last week. OK, uh, just to put it in perspective. Now, I fly more than most, but wow. And 41 percent said they would do it. 
Now, uh, the restrictions were higher among younger age groups. That's, that's people who live in mom's basement. That's people whose entire life is with the, uh, the meta oculus on their face while they're playing their video games and living in their meta world, whatever. Uh, but um, 59% between 18 and 24, they're not going anywhere. Uh, 59% of them supported the proposal. So this is 1,010 French citizens 18 years and older. Um, and uh, while the majority of respondents did not respond or, or did not support the extreme proposal, 64% stated that they'd be willing to reduce their air travel over the medium term due to environmental concerns. Okay. So um, earlier this year, France signed into law a ban on domestic short haul flights that can be completed in less than two and a half hours by train. (laughs) Ding, ding, ding. See, you got to remember, France is roughly the size of, I don't know, Texas. It's a reasonably large country. But again, um, you can you can drive across it. You can take a train across it. Uh, But their ban did not include. And here's the kicker, boys and girls. Their ban did not include private jet travel because <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to stop it for the elites. We're not going to we're not going to restrict them at all. No, they can still do their private jets, um, but they terminated routes. And, and it's like, I, what have I been telling you guys? And you say, why are you talking about this? What have I been telling you guys for months now? The world, whatever the, those in power. Okay, here's here's me putting my tinfoil hat on again. Those in power want to restrict your travel. They want you staying at home. Okay, now they're going to use climate change to do it. They don't want you moving about. It's happening in France. I've always said what happens in Europe always comes here. You don't think they're going to do that in America. It's coming. They're already levying taxes in California for people who are wanting to move out of the state. When they start restricting your travel, especially here in the United States, when you, you know, I drove from Texas to Tennessee uh, the other day. So from Texas, Arkansas to Tennessee, not a single time did I get stopped at a border at a state, you know, state line and they have to check my papers. Didn't have to do that. I could travel just as much as I wanted to. Now imagine you live in Europe. And you've got to go from uh, you got to go again. That you can drive across Europe. It's similar to driving across the U.S. In, in a lot of ways, you can you can you can be in you know multiple countries in a day uh, driving across Europe. Uh, in each place, you you got to have a passport. Now there's some agreements you know in Europe on how you get across. But again, this is this is Europe. You're traveling from country to country. Imagine if that were the case here, if you had to go state to state. Now, we've already seen it in the lockdowns. We already saw it in the shutdowns. We saw it during the pandemic. We saw it with COVID. They used every excuse they could to not only keep you isolated and at home, but, but yeah, to keep you away from people like family and, and, and you know, away from church and away from being able to congregate with other people. It's part of the, it's part of the plan, I'm telling you. And we're going to see more and more of this stuff that's happening. Um, and uh, France's transport minister, their version of Pete Buttigieg, although I don't think he, you know, he's French, but I don't think he runs that way. Uh, he stated last month that the, um, That the country would seek support from the European Union to set a minimum cost for flights in an effort to end cheap airfare and deter travelers. Look at that. Wow. Uh, Higher airfares. I can tell you right now, it's becoming an absolute crapshoot to try to get on an airplane and go anywhere. United, in my opinion right now, is the worst. Uh, I'm sure there's some others, but in terms of the ones I fly the most, United is terrible. Because, again, they've now implemented not, you know, quality control or hiring the best people, but diversity hires. And it's starting to show in everything they do. Um, uh, this uh, this uh, transport minister in France said it's not a question of multiplying by 10 the price of tickets. Why? Because there are also people who take a plane once in their life who don't have much money. It's also a freedom, a means of transportation that can't be reserved for only the rich. I think it's a discussion to have at the EU level. Um, so uh, it's it's coming, dude. I'm telling you, this stuff is coming to America. And you, you say, well, I don't think it's going to matter. It's not going to happen. Watch and see. What is what does it always say, Brandon? What does it always say? <clears throat> Chad is always right. That's right. Yeah. I'm never wrong. It I'm is, always right. It is really funny to see them treat flying like it's going to be like a trip to Mecca going forward. 
You know, <laughs> your great four trips that you get to take in your entire life. It's, it's just, <laughs> and the funny thing is, like, when you see the demographics and you're like, my age group and slightly younger is like, yeah, we should 100% do that. Almost overwhelming, overwhelmingly, you kind of realize, like, we got a lot of people with peasant mindsets. Where they're like, yeah, let the rich go wherever they want. But me, me, I can't go anywhere. Maybe maybe once exactly. or twice when someone dies, I can leave this state. And that's the application we need to realize. That, what you just said right there, Brandon, is exactly right. They want to keep you provincial. They do not want you cosmopolitan. They don't want you in multiple cities. They don't want you, uh, I mean, God forbid. And you're like, why? Well, because there's a separation between the haves and the have-nots. They have always pushed this. They want to keep you localized. They want to keep you cloistered up. And they want to keep you broke. They, they want to make sure that you are 100% dependent upon them. And who's them? Well, you, the government, you name it. They, I mean, whoever the – everything all the way down to the credit card companies. They want you dependent. Do you understand – listen, do you, do you understand how, how crazy they're trying to make life for you? Visa and MasterCard, they raised their, uh, they raised their fees during the pandemic by like 50%. And they're going to do it again. They're doing it again right now. You know why they're doing it? Because nobody's holding them accountable. They can do it. And now I don't use credit cards. I don't. I, don't, I made a personal decision back in 2007 that I wasn't going to use credit cards. Uh, I keep a. I keep a one credit card for business purposes that has a $1,200 limit. And uh, I run my businesses on cash. I don't, I don't get bank loans. I don't do any of that stuff because I don't want to be dependent on, on any of these people to control my finances. The interest rates are insane, but they're raising them again. That's why uh, 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 Roger, I think it's Roger Marshall and, uh, and Senator J.D. Vance, they're the, only, they're the only senators who are writing a bill to try to keep these credit card companies in check because, again, all of these things, whether it's travel, whether it's the banks, whether it's the financing, all of this stuff, it, they're doing this to keep you imprisoned. It is a, it's part of that plan, dude. They, they do not want you free. They don't want you communicating. Just this morning, I tried to run an ad for a show I'm doing next week in Birmingham, Alabama. I, I put a, a stand-up joke that I did on Facebook about Nancy Pelosi. I don't say anything about Nancy Pelosi. I talk about her plastic surgery and her cosmetic surgery, but I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about politics. I'm not telling you who to vote for or anything. I tried to run an ad. I tried to boost it in the Birmingham area and, and they immediately rejected the thing because they said, well, you can't discuss politics. Why can't I just dis discuss politics every day, all day on social media? I can't make a joke about Nancy Pelosi. Again, it's another way they wanna, they're going to limit everything we do. It, it, hey, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, play a clip for me before we go to a break here, just to prove it one more time. Play clip number two, Brandon. But what's significant about this data that just came out is it's showing that if you get a house today, factoring in your mortgage payment and, you know, your property taxes, you got to get homeowners insurance, you'll end up paying somewhere around 35 percent of your annual income <laughs> to afford a house. So that's way, way higher than what, you know, normal standards would consider affordable. 35% of your annual income. How much are you paying in taxes on your annual income? I mean, we're paying these people to be our overlords. We really are, to, to dominate us, to keep us, to, to keep us down. And then, and then the banks and everything else, this, this, the interest rates that are out there, what do I always say? Modern monetary theory, they believe that this kind of stuff is good. It's good for them. It's, it's, it, I mean, I don't understand why we pay taxes to a government that can print their own money. Think print money. Why am I paying them taxes? 35% of your income, you're broke. I mean, you're broke. After you pay taxes and you buy a house, you pay for your house, pay for a place to live, you're broke. You got nothing. And guess what? That's exactly what they want you to be because now you're dependent on them. This sucks. I ain't gonna lie to you. This whole deal sucks. And it pisses me off. But, you know, leave it to the French to, uh, to use something like their religion of climate change. They'll, they'll do it here. They're going to do it here. They're going to do it in the U.S. They're already doing it. And uh, people, people just sit back and they just keep lapping up that, that, that government tit. They love that titty milk off that government, man. I, I see people on Instagram and, and Facebook every day making comments to me. And they, they're just defending that government, man. They just love it so much. 
<laughs> Y'all don't know history. You really don't know history. And it's a shame. Uh, hey, listen, guys. Uh, last month, the G20 announced a plan to impose digital currencies and digital IDs on their respective populations. <laughs> Sound familiar? That's what we've been talking about for 15 minutes. Central bank digital currencies essentially allow the government to track every purchase you make. They could even allow officials to prohibit you from purchasing certain products or easily freeze or seize part or all of your money. In essence, they enable the government to take more control over your finances. Concerned Americans are diversifying their assets into physical gold with the help of Birch Gold Group. And so if you want a physical asset held in a tax-sheltered retirement account, you need to call Birch Gold too, but you need to learn for yourself, okay? Text C-H-A-D, I spell it Chad, 989898 is the number. They'll send you a free info kit on gold. The easiest way to become a Birch Gold customer, if you have an IRA or a 401k from a previous employer just gathering dust, Birch Gold can help you convert it into an IRA in gold. And you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Let them help you. Text Chad to the number 989898. Claim your free info kit on gold. Call them because if digital currency becomes a reality, it'll be nice to have some gold to fall back on. Hang tight. We'll be right back. And if, by some stretch of the imagination, you think that your Republican gods in Washington, D.C. are going to come save you. (laughs) Oh, that house of cards is imploding as well. Listen, there's nobody in Washington, D.C. that's coming to save you, that's for sure. These these pandering puppets up there in the Beltway, uh, it's incredible to watch uh, just the insanity ensue. I mean, we already saw the Jamal Bowman thing. We'll talk a little bit more about that, dude. you know, at this stage in the game, I'm, I, I just want to watch Taylor Swift. I, I just want to watch Taylor Swift up there at in the football suite. Um, yesterday, Matt Gates, uh, who I love to listen to him talk, even though he has that uh, eternal punchable face, he really does. <laughs> Yesterday, he, he he posted on X. He said, today I'm filing a motion to vacate against uh, Speaker McCarthy. So uh, he says McCarthy's lied on the things that he agreed to uh, whenever they put him in the role of speakership. Uh, House GOP, you remember that? I mean, they, you know, they 15 rounds of voting. I stayed up and watched it until 2 o'clock in the morning uh, when, they, when they put Kevin McCarthy in. Um, and, um, I, you know, I tell you what, mm, uh, it, it's just, it, this is insane. Now, of course, Kevin McCarthy came back and responded and said, bring it on. Um, and then you start seeing the news reports that started popping out last night, talking about the majority of Congress Republicans, GOP and Congress don't like Matt Gates. They want him out, which would take a two thirds vote. So, so somebody's going to go. At this point in time, I mean, nobody can get along. I, I, you, you know, you always talk about Republicans and Democrats and being another form of the World Wrestling Federation, you know, where they fight each other and then they go to the same steakhouse and drink wine and, together. And uh, I, we're seeing this stuff. I mean, the meltdown is happening on the GOP side. So now, of course, they came out and they said the House GOP wants to oust um they want to expel Matt Gates. <laughs> they said no one can stand him. Like, I, you know, I kind of can get that. I, I can kind of see that. I mean, he's, he's a guy who doesn't really sit by and just take a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, he's always going after folks. But um, uh, somebody said no one can stand him at this point, a smart guy without morals. Uh, so they're, they're – um, who knows? I mean, I think Matt Gates eventually is going to run for governor in Florida. We'll see what happens there. But a lot of people actually think that. But uh, he's under an ethics probe, all of that. And uh, you know what? Let's play clip 16. I mean, the speaker did not just fail to remediate the breach of the agreement with the, he made with us in January. He accelerated the instances of breach. Like, after I laid out the breach, he went and violated the 72-hour rule. After I laid out the breach, he violated the $100 million, uh, no amendment suspension rule. So he, he seems to, to be reverting to the very unfortunate muscle memory of Washington, D.C., that has put our nation atop a $33 trillion debt that has led to you know, $2 trillion annual deficits in our near future and the rapid global de-dollarization of the economy. I mean, you look at the BRICS system, 
you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they're moving away from the dollar. And just in August, they added six new countries, including G20 country uh, economies in the Western Hemisphere and Gulf monarchies. Uh, moreover, you've see, you saw U.S. News say that the number one economic trend of 2023 is de-dollarization globally. This worries me. You all get all worked up that there's going to be some uncomfortable, chaotic moment that I'll feel pressure from conservatives or Democrats or whomever. I feel the judgment of history. I feel the weight of that. I worry that when the history books are written about this country going down, that my name is going to be on the board of directors here. And if this country's going down and if we're losing the dollar, I am going down fighting. And I don't care if that means fighting Republicans, Democrats, the Uniparty, the leadership, the PACs, the lobbyists. I've had it. I've been here seven years. We don't have a fucking budget. We haven't had one since the mid-90s. <laughs> I am through with it. I apologize for using that word. But the only path forward here is to have single-subject spending bills that can be reviewed, amended, considered, and... I think that is the responsible way that our legislatures all over this country operate for good reason. I, I've been looking around this room trying to see if I could find the lie. I can't find it, Brandon. Is I like? <laughs> I, and, and just for the record, I left that I left that f bomb in there on purpose because that was beautiful. It, I mean, it was poetic. It yeah. really was. Yeah. Because again, if people are like, "Oh, you don't have to," yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point in time, when you when you look and go, you know, our generation might be the last truly American generation, whatever that means. Like, I, I like America as we have known it. I think is is barring a miracle, barring a lot of prayer, a lot of repentance, a lot of really coming back to realizing that we're not the gods that uh, that that we got to bow down to, to to a higher authority to us and really humble ourselves here. Um, yeah, we, this is probably it. I mean, this is the last generation, so I think we ought to get a little passionate about what we're seeing because if America goes down, the whole world goes down. People don't, people don't, they don't think about that. I, I walk around Nashville and I watch people. And uh, just last night I was, I was having dinner, just observing people. And Brandon, I'm telling you, man, you guys, you, you ever just sit out there and just analyze the level of beta that's in your presence? Uh, <laughs> just the weakness in you know, men that are out there. You know, I guess coming from LA, I got so just used to it. That it didn't, you yeah. know, I got numb to it, uh, per se. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I noticed it quite a bit, especially in my my younger brother's generation. They're all, they're so gay. <laughs> they're just so gay. So gay. Yeah. <laughs> like I, the I, weakness I, is I ridiculous. Say, I love my brother, but he does that stupid black nail polish, and I make fun of him every time for it. But their whole generation does it. That. It's just, it's just weird. Okay. I don't know. I, uh, it's funny you bring that up. Uh, I was out, I was out and I was watching people, uh, the, the guy behind the bar there, I always sit at the bar cause I'm watching the football game or whatever, or just, you know, wasting time sitting there by myself. He's got his nails painted black, you know, and I'm like, I, I get it. Y'all got a weird trend going on. I don't want to be the grumpy old guy, get off my lawn kind of person who says, yeah. Oh, you guys are you're the downfall of, I know that's happened forever, but you know, every generation looks at the generation coming after and been like, ah, oh, you guys are, you, you are going to be the end of us, you crazy kids. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if, if, if something were to happen in this country, bro, we're screwed. I oh. it's, it, get invaded, hard times fall, <laughs> the dollar collapses, power grid, anything. And, um, oh, imagine my generation, my generation going to war uh, is comical, no. comical. No, can't do it. Can't do it. And and I'm not, I can't because I get winded. <laughs> <laughs> I drink way too much to go to war, man. Uh, um, and that, and I, that and I'm pretty, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't want to mess this up. But, uh, dude, it, the weakness is, I, I was sitting there with uh, our friend Jill Savage, and I pointed, I, I looked at her and I said, Jill, from a women's perspective, from a girl's perspective, I said, look around the room and look uh it look, look, just look at the weakness that just oozes off of people. I mean, everybody lives in this false sense of security and comfort that, you know, it's been provided to them by the sacrifices, the tenacity of other people. They, they haven't done anything, 
you know, they bitch because they have to get up and go to a job or they don't get paid enough, you know, minimum wage or something like that. But, you know, if you if somebody said and I posted it on Facebook yesterday, it's so true that uh, that uh, if you learn to carry your own water, you'll also learn to value every drop. Um because it matters when you're doing it yourself. Having somebody else do something for you is is a definite way to uh, to failure. And so I'm just looking at this, and I'm reminded of, uh, and I think I told this story last week. I may not have, but, it, you know, the, the back in the Roman Empire, we, everybody's thinking about the Roman Empire right now, you know, about the, 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 the king the, or the emperor of a kingdom there who was, and this is, I need to pull all the facts on this thing, but he basically had all the boys in his kingdom, in his empire, uh, train with the girls, school with the girls. All the guys had to, they were raised like the girls. The reason is he wanted effeminate men. He wanted weak men because he didn't want anybody from the inside of his kingdom throwing him over. He, he didn't want the, he had to be ousted by any of the men in his country. Well, you know what happens, right? You, you raise a generation of weak men. Well, then the powers from outside are going to come in and, and it, you can't put up a fight. Because you've literally raised a generation of girls. Girls. <sighs> but here we are. Here we are. It just, just, I want you guys, just as an exercise, the next time you're out and about, especially in a city, <laughs> next time you're out and about, I want you to look at the level of beta, just the weakness, the soy that's oozing out of people around you. you that's been done by design. That's why I don't, you know, the last time I was ever on the curvy couch there on Fox and Friends uh, there in New York City, they, they had a, that episode. I was on the episode where the, the new Vanity Fair had come out and that new uh, some sitcom had come out about beta males or whatever. And they flashed the picture up there and they wanted my opinion on the cover of Vanity Fair where these guys are standing in a line and they all got their hands in each other's pockets. And, and after I got done commenting on that they never had me back on fox and friends <laughs> ever again so you know that's the world we're living in and somebody's got to call this shit out so hey you know whatever's going on there uh in washington dc between kevin mccarthy and matt gates i like matt gates or not um um uh, you know i mean the dude's been investigated um he's been cleared by the doj the fec I mean, they, they keep spreading stuff about him. You know, everything from being a pedophile to, you know, all these, you know, whatever. But at least he's speaking up. At least he's saying some things. And, and I got I to appreciate the fight that's in the guy. But uh, trust me, the implosion is happening all around us, man. And, and nobody's coming to save us. Uh, well, hey, you want, you want to have a little fight in the game? Uh, you need to take care of your health. If you're suffering from low energy or brain fog or unexplained extra flab or you just got a whole lot of soy going on in your system, uh, the problem could be your liver. That's right. You may not know it, but your liver is the foundation for good health. It performs more than 500 key functions every single day for you. It filters toxins. It breaks down nutrients. It keeps your cholesterol in check. But over time, your liver can start to wear down. That's when you get the energy crashes, you get the belly fat, you get the trouble with memory and concentration. Fortunately, there is a simple solution. It's called Liver Health Formula. Liver Health Formula contains 11 powerful herbs and nutrients clinically proven to recharge and revitalize your liver. It also helps protect against a fatty liver, which is a silent epidemic facing 100 million Americans right now. Liver Health Formula is manufactured in the USA. It's approved by American doctors. And as a listener to the Chad Prather Show, you can try Liver Health Formula and receive a free bottle of nano-powered omega-3 to keep your heart and your brain healthy as well when you order today. So go to Get liverhelp.com slash chad claim that free bonus again that's get liverhelp.com slash chad we'll be right back all right um taylor swift i tell you i was uh I got tickled yesterday about I, this is what I said. I didn't say it on the show, but I said it. Um, I said it to someone yesterday afternoon. I said, "This is going to hurt Taylor Swift, like her continuing to show up at these football games and then panning up there to her sitting in the suite." Now, again, she didn't ask for that, but she knows she's going to get that kind of attention. I said, "But even her people that like her, 
they're going to start to get sick of her because if they're watching a football game, they don't want to keep watching Taylor Swift. I can tell you. Now, she's going to be fine. She's worth $800 million. She'll be fine. But people are going to get sick of that. I saw some NFL memes yesterday that said, hey, Travis, could you go ahead and cheat on her? Because we can't take this shit all year long. <laughs> so, uh, but again, again, the circus in the, the circus is happening in the Coliseum while America melts down. And uh, Taylor Swift is there. She's the soundtrack to America's apocalypse. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, Democrats, Republicans, all of us, we are never, ever, ever getting back together. Uh, but uh, part of the problem is uh, our uh, Justice Department. We got an attorney general who's a piece of garbage. He's a guy who called, you know, PTA moms and people that care about their kids' education domestic terrorists. Um, he's a guy has, uh, who has consistently fueled division uh, and certainly been behind. You can't convince me otherwise, but convinced me uh, or been behind um, – uh, plenty of witch hunts that are out there. We're watching a lot of these these things happen across the country. Uh, but uh, but he's got a heart. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, A.G. Garland, Merrick Garland, he's got a heart. And I, I want you guys to just get a little bit of that sympathy from him, okay? Uh, play clip number four. American people must protect each other. Oh. They must ensure that they treat each other with civility and kindness, listen to opposing views, argue as vociferously as they want, but refrain from violence and threats of violence. That's the only way this democracy will survive. Why do you feel so strongly about that? Well, I feel it for a number of reasons and, and a number of things that I've seen, but for my own family who, who uh, fled uh, religious persecution in Europe, um, and some members who did not uh, survive. survive when they got to the United States. The United States protected. It guaranteed uh, that they could practice their religion, that they could vote, they could do all the things they thought a democracy would provide. Um, that's the difference between this country and many other countries. And it's my responsibility, it's the Justice Department's responsibility to ensure that that difference continues, that we protect each other. Uh, just FYI, guys, and I know that gets you in the heart. I know, I know you just want to mm, just shed a little tear with Merrick Garland there. Um, let, me, let me just tell you guys that um, the foundation of America and uh, our ability to remain a great nation, contrary to what Merrick Garland just said, is not our ability to get along. The other things are a little more important, like truth, um, the rule of law, justice, um, fighting tyranny, um, the Constitution, those values, the foundations that we are built upon as a republic, uh, life, liberty, property. Uh, those kind of things are a little more important than our ability to just get along. We don't get along because those things have been violated by men like Merrick Garland. When we live in an age of legal tyranny, judicial tyranny, uh, medical tyranny, all of the, the the federal government run amok, as Matt Gates said a minute ago, as he pointed out, they don't have a budget and thirty three trillion dollars in debt, and, and our, our our government spends money. I don't care if it was Donald Trump in the middle of COVID and everything else, or Joe Biden, they spend like drunken sailors, and they just print more money. They tax you for it. You can't even afford a home. Thirty five percent of your annual income just to have a house. But he's going to sit there and cry and say, oh, we got to we got to be able to protect each other and we got to be able to get along, bro. You have you have taken the rule of law. You've taken the Constitution and literally wiped your ass with it. You're going to sit there and cry and talk about getting along when you called parents domestic terrorists. I'm sorry, I don't get along with that. 
parents who want to stand up and, and speak out, parents who want to defend their daughters from getting raped by people who with mental confusion, who, you know, boys that are dressing up like girls that are going into the school bathrooms with them. And, they, and, and these kind of things are happening and, and parents are speaking out about it and getting very passionate about it. And guys like Merrick Garland are going to say, oh, no, 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 um, you're domestic terrorist. I'm sorry. I'm not getting along with that. I'm not going to be okay with that. But he's not done. Merrick Garland had some more more stuff to say. Uh, play, uh, which is the one I wanted. Uh, play the play the. Uh, ah, just play this. Play uh, number eleven. These prosecutions of the former president are happening during the campaign. You could make the argument that it's the worst possible time. The Justice Department has general practices about not making significant overt steps or charging within a month or so of an election. We are clearly outside that, uh, that time frame uh, in these cases. Um, prosecutors, special counsel, they follow the facts and the law where they lead when they've gotten the uh, amount of evidence necessary to make a charging decision and have decided that a charge is warranted, that's when they bring their cases. The investigation itself has determined the timing. Yes, exactly right. Your critics say that it's time to ruin Mr. Trump's chances in the election. Well, that's absolutely not true. Justice Department prosecutors are nonpartisan. They don't allow partisan considerations to play any role in their determinations. Well, I'll tell you what Merrick Garland allows to play a role is uh, the fact that he didn't get appointed to the Supreme Court. And now this is his opportunity for vengeance. It's just that's what's happening. We're watching this thing happen. You want to talk about, you know, he goes on to talk about, um, you know, he's not talking to the Biden administration about Trump, uh, that uh, that there's the same rules for Republicans and Democrats. I mean, can we talk about all the shell companies that are now tied back to the big guy, you know, Joe Biden, uh, Pedo Peter? Um, can, can we talk about any of this? Can we talk about all the burner phones? Can we talk about, you know, the peddling of influence? And you're going to sit there and, and you're going to talk about how this is not partisan. Give me a break. The only thing that you the only thing that that, that um, Hunter Biden gets indicted for is a gun charge. That is literally the only thing that's been discussed that can't be tied back to Joe Biden, the president. But that's the only thing they're going to charge him with is the gun charge. And you're going to tell me that this is not partisan. Cry more. Cry more. Because I don't, I don't I'm not I'm not picking up what you're putting down. Merrick. Who the hell names her kid Merrick? That's a good question. Oh, grew up to be an asshole. All right. Hey, guys, cleaning guns. It's one of those necessary hassles that uh, you have to do if you're going to be a responsible gun owner. And uh, it's a dirty job, but you got to do it. I don't like using the patches anymore. I don't like using the boar snakes anymore. What I have found is Barrel Buddy. Barrel Buddy is amazing. And uh, they're a great solution for, uh, for what you need whenever you're cleaning all of your guns. Yes, all of your guns. Because Barrel Buddy, it'll compress to fill the interior of your gun's barrel. And it does it in such a way that it will clean the rifling grooves as well. There are seven different sizes that uh, one of those sizes will match any caliber firearm you got. You just pick whichever one of those seven and you'll, you'll find a match. Barrel Buddy is composed of polymers that won't leave behind the residual particles, so it's safer as well. It cleans, it scrubs, it collects particulates, it absorbs the remaining residue, it buffs the interior surface clean, and you can even lubricate your firearm while you're cleaning it. So, cleaning your gun is important. You've got to be a responsible gun owner, and that's part of it. Barrel Buddy is a new concept. It's a better concept. It's a great way to take care of your firearms. And you know what? It's made by really cool Americans, and they're good friends. I guarantee you're going to love Barrel Buddy. So get yourself some. Go to BarrelBuddy.com today. That's BarrelBuddy.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Now, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Chad Prather Show. Go to where podcasts are offered and leave a rating and review. Five stars. That's what we deserve. And uh, tell us what you think. Um, even if it's a crappy review, we want the reviews. Give us the reviews. All the reviews. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court has rejected the challenge to block Trump in 2024. So um, his eligibility to be on the 2024 presidential ballot 
being challenged in a lot of states. And uh, he says, he says, uh, Supreme Court said, nope, you're going to be on the ballot. So we'll see how that goes there. Trust me, they're not done trying to do all that stuff. Um, um, you know, New Hampshire was one of them that tried to try to keep him off. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Uh, and of course, Trump, he was in court yesterday in this. Civil, and I am sure you guys saw the goofy ass judge, uh, you know, hamming it up for the camera over there. Uh, play clip number six. Hear what Trump had to say. And we're wasting our time under this trial. To the Democrat judge from the clubhouses, it's a disgrace. They ought to look for the murderers and the killers that are all over New York killing people and the violent crime that's being committed in our city and our state is disgraceful and we're going to be here for months with a judge that already made up his mind. It's ridiculous. He's a Democrat judge, he's an operative, and it's ridiculous. Other than that, things went very well. <laughs> I love seeing Trump pissed off, man. That's fun. Oh, the end of that. Uh, and he's not wrong. Such classic Trump. But outside of that, I think it went well. Ah, he's the best. Other than that, I think it went well. He's, he's already made up his mind. I'm guilty. But other than that, it went well. Yeah. Um, in, 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 to, in any of the uh, the crazy re-re's that want to attack you on social media and say, oh, well, Trump, he, they're dissolving, you know, Trump International there in New York City. is gonna, it's gonna, They're going to dissolve all of Trump's businesses in New York. That's ludicrous. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. And, and, and here's what you ask those, those re-re's on, online when you get into those arguments that are useless. Ask them who the victim is. Ask them who's, who's doing the suit. Who's the victim? Who's the plaintiff? Who, what insurance company? What trust company? What mortgage company? Tell me anybody he hasn't paid back. Tell me who the victim is in this civil suit. You can't do it because there isn't one. That's, that's why he's saying the judge has already made up his mind. The guy is already, he's on record. There's video out there. You go look up this judge on record saying, I don't care what the jury says. If I, if my emotions tell me to rule otherwise, I'll overrule the jury. <laughs> what? I mean, what happened to Merrick Garland crying, you know, saying that, you know, we got to all get along and, and the guy who's on top of the department of, of justice. Well, there's one of your judges right there who's saying, oh, I don't care what the jury says. If my emotions tell me otherwise, then I'll overrule it. And that's, that, I, there's a word for that. I think it's bullshit. I mean, that, that's not justice. So, but you can't find a victim. There's no victim in this civil suit who's come against Trump. I, I mean, go again. You want to leave a comment, leave a comment. But you tell me who the victim is. There's nobody. There's nobody. That's what they call a witch hunt, folks. It's a sham. It's a sham. And yes, Trump is right. They've already made up their mind. This, this is why, this is why, unless the Lord intervenes and tells me otherwise, this is why I'm voting for Trump. This, because, because again, y'all hate him so much. I'm like, you know what? You deserve him again. <laughs> and you know what? Go out there and poll some people on the street. Go out there and poll some people on the street. Nobody likes Joe Biden. We know that. Nobody, nobody. I mean, most popular president in history. I don't think so. But go out there and ask him. So you might not have liked the guy personally, Trump. You might not have liked him. But the four years he was in office, man, things sure were, with the exception of the end, where there with the COVID nonsense, things sure were a lot better. But enjoy paying, you know, 35% of your annual income on a house. Enjoy those progressive policies like France is trying to institute where you can only fly four times in a lifetime. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. No, you don't like the guy. But there's, there's no victims in the civil suit. But again, you're going to sit there and talk about all of these indictments and all these cases and all this kind of stuff. It's a bunch of crap. Um, Lafonza, Lafonza Butler. Uh, of course, she is the uh, she is the what CEO of Emily's List. She's she's an abortion lover. Let's put it what it is. She she's all about women's reproductive health. No, she's she's an abortionist, and uh, she has now been slated. She's from Maryland, not even California. I mean, she's been in California long enough, I think, to have a cup of coffee, but uh, Lafonza Butler is the Maryland-based head of that uh, of Emily's List. She's the one Gavin Newsom has announced. He said it's going to be a black woman, and she's a lesbian. So the boxes are checked, Brandon, as far as I can tell. And, and what a cool name, LaFonza. Right? This is like, I was so excited when I read that name. This is my favorite <laughs> name that I've come across in a while. LaFonza Butler, spelled L-A-P-H-O-N-Z-A. <laughs> God, it's so 
<laughs> it's a name I would call it's black American tribal names where like they're reverting back to African tribal names, but it's American. So it sounds silly. Oh, boy. She, well, she's she's going to be, you know, who knows if she'll run for that Senate seat. I think it's going to be uh, Kamala uh, whistle dick over there. I think it's going to be Adam Schiff. Oh, yeah. He's going to run for that Senate seat. I mean, it, it, California's a joke at this point. But, uh, yeah, but but we don't know anything about her qualifications other than uh, she's the head of a radical pro-abortion group. She's black, she's female, and she's a lesbian. LaFazza. So, uh, yeah. And she's a former advisor uh, to Kamala Harris when she was a presidential candidate. The person who was who was out of the Democratic primaries first, Kamala Harris, with less than one percent of support. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, California's doing great, man. But she's now been appointed to uh, replace Diane Feinstein as they head into as they. Now again, again, you can't talk about anybody's race. You can't talk about anybody's sexuality. You can't complain about, you know, anybody's gender, remember. But let's not forget the most progressive governor, arguably the most progressive governor in the country, Gavin Newsom. He said, I need it to be a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, it's, it's just all in who says it. Bottom line, it's all in who says it. If I say it, it's a horrible thing to say. Gavin Newsom says it, or Joe Biden says his vice president's going to be a female of color. Uh, yeah, it's all in who says it, okay? Uh, don't say colored people, by the way. Say people of color. It, just, just so you know, it's, it's, it's the arrangement of the words. Because if you say colored people, that's racist. But if you say people of color, well, you get away with that. Well, they can. You can't. Make sense to you? Good. LaFonza. All right, hang tight. Be right back. Ah, still so much stuff I want to get into. It's 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 weird. It's kind of out of my element being here in this in this studio. Uh, it's I like being there with you boys, but here we are anyway. Thanks to uh, thanks to uh, Brandon and Joe there in uh, in the Dallas studios, as well as everybody here in Nashville um, taking care of us at the Blaze. Uh, I've got to head over to the studio now. Go to do some magic. You guys uh, pay attention because it's coming very soon. I'd be jolly too. It's going to be the best song of the year. And it's a Christmas song. You're going to love it. Um, I mean, it may get a Grammy nomination. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to be in uh, McKinney, Texas, Saturday night there at Hank's. Uh, Watchchad.com is where all the fun stuff is. has all the information you need. Uh, so it's a last-minute show, a little pop-up. Come on out there, folks. And then next week in Hoover, Alabama at the Stardome. Don't forget, the end of this month, the first of next month, we're going to be at uh, the Looney Bin there in Tulsa, Oklahoma for three nights. I think I'll bring Jesse Payton with me for that. And uh, then we got some other stuff coming up. I'm going to be down in Cleveland, Texas. Going to be over in Terrell, Texas. We've got some stuff. It's going to be fun. So come check us out. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to Blaze, you need to do that. BlazeTV.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Tomorrow's Wednesday, which means we're going to get humpty hump. We'll see you then. Love you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.